Hey there, hackers. My name is Natasha Null, and I'm the managing editor over at Hacker Noon. Today, I want to try something new, reading the week's top technology stories on hackernoon.com to save you time and keep you up to speed on the go. We'll kick this week off in emerging technology with insights into the global robotics market, one of Monday's top stories on hackernoon.com, with the following fun facts and more provided by Capital X Partners. 2020 marks 100 years since the word robot was first coined by science fiction playwright Carl Capek. 40 years later, in 1961, General Motors installed the world's first industrial robot, paving the way for automated manufacturing and the era of programmable machines. Today, the global industrial robot market is worth $48 billion per annum, and demand for robotic technology is accelerating rapidly. This is on the back of the fourth industrial revolution and advancements in digital technologies which are democratizing access to robot technology. The article goes on to argue that robotic systems have become easier to install, quicker to program, and cheaper to operate. And, as a result, the barriers to wider adoption are driven lower and lower each year. The article further anticipates that, as robot prices continue to decline, there will be two major inflection points. The first, further deflationary pressure should fast-track interest from the industrial SMEs, especially those who have traditionally avoided robotic automation due to cost and complexity. In Europe, there are over 2 million SME manufacturing enterprises, which employ 60% of the continent's 17 million manufacturing employees. Robot density among manufacturing SMEs currently stands at 6 units per 10,000 employees. This is significantly lower than the European average of 114, highlighting the market potential which has not yet been adequately addressed. The second inflection point mentioned in this article is that over the next five years, the upfront unit cost of an industrial robot will decline below the average annual manufacturing wage in China. As a result, China's competitive advantage in global manufacturing will likely decline, propelling a shift in global production to cheaper markets. To combat this trend, China is investing heavily in robotic automation. It is now the world's largest market for industrial robots, accounting for 36% of annual installations. On to startups now, Hacker Noon contributor Misan Echi believes today's thriving startups will be camels and not unicorns. Writing, unicorn is the term given to startups that are able to achieve a billion dollar valuation. Although it is not as rare as it was a decade ago, these startups are still often the center of Silicon Valley's obsession with building, finding, and funding the next big thing. The majority of unicorn startups are known for growing tremendously fast and burning cash without any sign of profit or a single dime in revenue. Unicorn startups in their early days are celebrated for losing lots of money in the course of gaining new customers, acquiring subsidiaries, building new products and services, and increasing their growth. Unicorns continue to lose hordes of money even after selling to customers and generating revenue because revenue derived from early customers is most times not enough to cover operating costs. Therefore, startups spend capital to acquire new customers with the hopes that future revenue surpasses operating costs. This might have played out exceptionally well for companies like Facebook and Amazon, but sometimes the strategy doesn't pan out as well with startups like Ship and WeWork failing after initial explosive growth. Etchi goes on to explain that so-called camel startups, unlike their money-hemorrhaging unicorn counterparts, grow in controlled spurts, raising capital, and by investing in growth only when the opportunity calls for it, achieve that growth in manageable increments and not by sacrificing profits, therefore building their entire business on fundamentally sound footing. Camels understand that a product's price doesn't mar growth or customer acquisition, and rather than subsidize their products and services to accommodate emerging markets not willing to pay as much, they work on improving product and customer satisfaction, thus giving them, eventually, a product worth paying for. Staying with tech startups, Hacker Noon contributor and co-founder at Code Summit, Tracy Phillips, published a piece on Wednesday outlining three actionable steps for more inclusive tech teams, posing the question, without diverse perspectives, how will the startups of the world build tools that connect us? 
help us search for and discover new things and innovate in equitable and inclusive ways. Phillips goes on to cite McKinsey research reporting that companies in the top quartile for ethnic and cultural diversity on executive teams were 35% more likely to be profitable, while noting that today, only about 3.7% of technical roles at Google are filled by black employees. As for the three proposed solutions in this article, number one, fill up your pipeline with underrepresented candidates. Number two, Create a hiring process that is based on skill and not pedigree. Number three, make a concerted effort to make sure that it is truly possible for everybody to advance their career within your organization. You can read Misan Etchi and Tracy Phillips' full startup stories and so many more over at hackernoon.com forward slash tagged forward slash startups. A few more Hackanoon headlines potentially worth your online attention if you're in the mood for some motivation this weekend. A handy guide on how to negotiate everything in life. An even handier guide on how to not attribute to malice things adequately explained by stupidity. And how I started my own business at 19. Mandy's story of going straight from school to startup. All on Hackanoon.com right now. That's it from me, Natasha at Hackanoon, for this week. See you on the internet.